provide some mechanical strain relief here and uh, the control cable just goes down around the mast. Uh, I would probably tie wrap that. Uh, let's see, this is the mounting bracket and such. What, what you do is just uh, adjust, this is the tuning. Uh, the unit has to be tuned when it's in the final position and the wire is uh, wire is locked down and adjusted. Just adjust the meter. Uh, you know, I've, I've got it adjusted for 5 volt range here. Adjust the meter so it's at a comfortable range. It really doesn't matter where it's at. Adjust the jumper shunt so it's uh, it should be near the middle range, but adjust the jumper shunt so, so you're at maximum voltage. Let's see. I'll try that position. I'll go one lower. That's low. Looks like it was right in the position that we need. And uh, Let's see, I'm going to adjust this for the peak. Make sure we're at the peak. Yes, we are. See, I turned it left. Okay, now I'm going to turn it right. See, it was, there's the peak. I'm going to turn it back to where it was at the peak. And there we're at the peak. Make sure the audio level is all the way up. And adjust your level from the ground. This is where the control cable comes up. Uh, we're connecting the wires here. Red and positive for power, red and black. Black is minus. Here's the audio. I connect my shield here. Don't connect it at the other end. It's, you just connect your shield at one end. And this is the other end of the uh, of the cable. Uh, this is kind of the, this is the studio interface, the AM1000PR. This is where the cable comes in. Power, red, black, audio, green, white, and this is the uh, power transformer plug. And this is the audio. These are the two audio jacks. This one here at the edge is for line in. It'll work with virtually any impedance from four or five hundred ohms up to up pretty high. Uh, and uh, then this is for uh, eight to sixteen ohm uh, headphone out, speaker out there. And uh, here is the uh, audio gain for the board, uh, plus minus six dB, right in there. It's the gas tube for lightning protection. It's important for lightning protection that there be a good ground all the way to the dirt. You don't want to connect it through a metal mast or pole. Uh, you want a copper path going from the binding post all the way to uh, the uh, grounding rod. All your ground connections and other connections need to be soldered or, or bright and shiny, then tightly clamped. The transmitter, put the lid back on, make sure your audio is all the way up, and uh, then at that point, uh, you go on to set your power. Now, uh, I've got a meter hooked up, black lead in the top hole, red lead in the bottom hole. Uh, this is a 10-turn tuning capacitor. Uh, I usually like to start out with the tuning capacitor about halfway, about halfway position. Uh, just set the power. So you've got a good reading, doesn't matter really where, just so you've got a good reading. Uh, start out with a jumper shunt approximately in the middle. Um, what you want to do is uh, adjust, take, oh, keep your fingers away from the antenna and the coil, see what happens to the reading. When I touch the coil and the antenna, just totally gets messed up. And um, you want to do the tuning also after the transmitter is totally installed, after the wire is all secure and it's in its final position. It won't work if you try and tune it on the ground. So just take the jumper shunt and then try a couple different positions. Uh, if you have to, just re take a piece of paper and record uh, all the voltage at all the different position, jumper positions and pick the point at which the voltage is the highest. That appears to be that position. And then take your take your cap, but, and always use just this trimmer tool on the on the capacitor. Don't use a small screw metal screwdriver; that won't work. And then get it in there, and then see tune to the left, okay, going down, tune back to the power clockwise. Okay, you see it's going back down. I'm going to back it back up to where the voltage is supposed to be. Now, if you turn turn uh, the uh, cap tune all the way counterclockwise, and it just keeps on going up to the capacitor stops, you're not tuned. Same uh, if you go the other way. If you tune uh, turn it all the way clockwise, and the voltage just keeps on going up to the capacitor stopped, you're not tuned. In that case, you need to put the capacitor back in mid position, and well, maybe just back it up a couple turns, and then just uh, adjust the shunt 
up, up, or up or down one position and try and retune. You need to find a rolling peak, just like I showed you, or the unit is not tuned. Uh, what's happening is you're finding the resonance of the circuit. And see how I'm turning it right, turning it clockwise, turning it clockwise, and it's going back, it's going down again. See how now I'm turning it counterclockwise, turning it counterclockwise. See how it went up and down. See how I'm not changing the direction that I'm turning it. See how it goes up and down. See how I just found the position of the cap tune where it's at, the voltage is at the peak. And at that point you're tuned. Be sure and return the uh, audio pot back up to maximum after you've uh, tuned the transmitter. And uh, I usually leave the pot uh, at the transmitter at maximum and adjust the level from the ground. And at that point uh, in here, turned. you can use either terminal block. Uh, the red and the black are for power, red plus, and then the green and the black are for audio. And then I have the shield connected to ground here. Uh, you don't want to connect the shield at the other end, just connect the shield at one end. Uh, I could have connected at the other end, it probably it doesn't matter much. Uh, and uh, here's the cable diagram in the uh, that comes with the transmitter. Pretty much just shows uh, what, I've, what I've shown you. And um, uh, there should be a ferrite actually on the cable. And uh, we haven't put that on yet. And I uh, have it right here. The ferrite that goes on the control cable. And this uh, this uh, limits uh, RFI coming out of the box and traveling down the down the cable. This is the new uh, audio uh, power adapter unit, and this eliminates a lot of problems with uh, impedance matching and level outputs. Uh, the cabling of the transmitter is simple. Uh, at this end, power ground audio just goes right into the terminal block, and at the other end of the wire, power. Red plus audio just goes right into this terminal block. And you can wire into other terminal blocks. The reason there are two terminal blocks and two holes is for multiple transmitters. Like if you're putting a transmitter down the highway every so often, you can go cable in, cable out. And that's why there's two terminal blocks. But back to the audio adapter. Uh, here's your power in. And um, here is, here's the audio inside. This jack is for an 8 ohm. 8 to 16 ohm input, and this jack is for line in, and the line in can be anywhere from several hundred ohms all the way up to 100,000 ohms. Uh, doesn't matter. And this this uh, this audio gain uh, is a plus plus or minus 60 dB uh, adjustment. And when the uh, flat is straight up, then the, then it's a nominal gain. So it's just the thing. Uh, if you're having trouble, gain is a check the voltage on the power input terminals. Uh, make sure you've got at least 14 volts there. Um, low range can often be a bad ground. <coughs> Could just be bad soil conductivity in your area. That won't cause severe problems, but it'll cause you to have, you know, uh, average the poor range as opposed to good range, maybe. Or maybe the, gra the ground rod's just in gravel or sand instead of dirt. If you could just push your ground rod to the ground, then that's ba a bad sign. Uh, good dirt is like good farming dirt. You know, it's not all sand or all clay. It's somewhere in between. Um, bad connections are often the problem. Just just wrapping wire around the rod or, you know, wrapping the wire around a screwdriver and throwing it in the ground. That's, that's not going to work. You need to have a, a copper-clad ground rod in the ground. Uh, soldered or tightly clamped, and the, the wire needs to be properly installed, all secured, straight, no coils. Uh, someone sent me a picture one time, and they had they had run the ground wire, and uh, to, you know, 90% of the ground wire was was in on a, on a spool laying right next to the ground wire, and you know they didn't want to they didn't want to cut it in case they needed it later. Not gonna work. <laughs> it's got to be a straight shot from the binding post right to the ground wire, no loops, curves, or detours.